Okay, everyone, welcome to the Experimental Aircraft hey, Channel. Kind of uh, a unique um, episode today. I wanted to, I'm getting ready to need insurance in the next six months to a year, and I figured it'd be a great time to talk everything aircraft insurance today. So today we have Jerry Clemens of Clemens Insurance Agency, and we're going to talk about aircraft insurance. Welcome, Jerry. Hey, Brian, how's it going? Excellent, excellent. Thanks for joining me today and being able to discuss what you do and the products that you have to offer. So let's, um, let's dive right into one of the first questions I had written down is, well, no, before we do that, talk about yourself for a second. Tell me, tell me a little bit about uh, your history in aviation, uh, what ratings you have, and maybe what kind of aircraft you fly. Uh, my history in aviation, I, I grew up in an aviation family. So my dad was a flight instructor when we were kids. And he had always had this great passion of flying. So he did that. And then as well as he was a crop duster, he did some charter flights. He did helicopter crop dusting, just you name it. He did it. When we, uh, when we were kids, we grew up flying. So we would, if we went somewhere, it was just common for us to get in an airplane and leave and go. And there were five kids and, so that made it a little bit difficult, but it worked. <laughs> so you were introduced we did that to it. We were pretty young. So you're introduced to a good variety but of yeah. aviation. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So you know, we we grew up uh, hanging out on airports. My dad was also a. Uh, he would go out and haul the skydivers, and and when we were kids, we would hang out at the airport and. and Horrible, horrible childhood. He hauled those skydivers. What, what a way to spend your time as oh, a child. Oh, God, huh? we were terribly. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, yeah, we, awesome. My brother and I, my brothers and I, we found a stack of wood, and, and we were determined that we were going to build an aircraft out of that stack of wood. Right. So, right. <laughs> so, so what are you, um, what are you uh, currently was, flying? What do, you, what do you have available to fly? Uh, so... I, I have a Bonanza, VTEL Bonanza, V35B that I fly. That's my go-to daily nice. driver nice. plane. Um, my wife has a Cessna 182, a 65 model. Very nice. And that's fun to have a wife that flies. and that, Yeah, you know, somebody, somebody to support you, which you, you do. You yeah. Uh, I also have a, a, a Piper Cub. The cool. 46 model. It's it's just a J3 Cub, but it it looks like an L4 Cub. You know the military version. Nice. So yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that when I was out there in Benton. Yeah, yeah. Dan was giving a few rides in it. Dan Grider. Yeah, that's right. All right. Good plane. So, Good plane. Yeah. Well, let's let's jump right it. In, let's jump right into this. Uh, let's first go into like why do we even need aircraft insurance? Why why do we need this? <laughs> Well, you and, know, and, I, I'm a big believer in never insuring anything that 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 you can't that you can afford to lose. Okay. So if 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 you if you can afford to lose something, then go ahead and not insure it. It's just silly to insure something like that. But if if you cannot afford to lose it, well, then obviously you're going to need to insure it. Uh, also, with the liability part of it, you know, there's there's that to where if you do something that is going to hurt, if you're going to, if you end up damaging something of someone else's or hurting someone, then you know that the expenses of that can be pretty big. So sure. Sure. Okay. Those are really good reasons why you should buy insurance. So what, what different types of insurance are there? I've heard, you know, back when I was doing flight training, I don't know if that product was available. Now they have like flight school, uh, I guess as a, as a student pilot, you have some type of insurance. You get the flight school itself sometimes wants you to have insurance. There's yeah, club insurance. There's, the there's hull and motion and renters and builders. And so talk to me about the different products that are available because it sounds like a lot so, has changed. Um, renters insurance, uh, basically the same thing that you would, you're talking about whenever a flight school is requiring you to buy insurance. That's basically what I believe you're talking about there. Mm -hmm. And so, so if you go out and rent an airplane, then, and you damage that aircraft, then you can buy insurance to 
pay for that damage. Okay. And, you know, surprisingly, that's, that's relatively inexpensive. It's, it's, it's a really good thing to do and it's easy to get with, with our insurance agency. You can actually go on our website and, and get a quote for that online. It's quite easy. Okay. So what does that look like if you're, a, if you're a student and you ding up, you know, your, your solo, I don't know. And you, uh, you break <laughs> in here. What is, what is the out of pocket for renter's insurance to, uh, well, you know, if, if you have the renter's insurance, then the out-of-pocket would be nothing other than oh, the premium. Okay. So, you know, so you, you really wouldn't be spending any additional monies if you have the insurance, unless you go over the limit that you that you've purchased, because you can choose on what limit of coverage to buy. Yeah. Whether it be, uh, you know, five thousand to two hundred fifty thousand, you you can buy that. Yeah. And you just have to select. And what I would recommend doing is selecting the amount that, that, that the aircraft is worth plus maybe a little bit more. And the reason being is if you're at a flight school, and, and I think it would, it, it varies by where you're at, but some, some schools, if, if you ding up their airplane, they're going to require you to pay the loss of use on top oh, of the air. Yeah. Yeah. While well, it's down so being repaired or something replaced. to think about at least. Yeah. Yeah. That's scary. So there's you know, before you go out renting one, you know, it's something that you should get, you know, clear the air and find out if that's something that they would be required from you. Sure. So there's renters insurance. What are the type of uh, products are there for insurance and aircraft? So you have the renters insurance and um, like you, for example, you're in, in the process of building an aircraft right now. And so, if something were to happen to that while it's in your garage or in your shop, like a hurricane to or tornado, oh, hurricane, yeah. tornado, in fire, yeah, whatever, uh, you can purchase aircraft insurance just for that while you're building it. Okay. And one of the nice things about doing that is, I mean, first of all, you, you've got your coverage. If something was to happen to that, project while you're building it uh but the next thing is is that if you haven't had aviation insurance before it's a time to where you can get to know the aviation insurance company and it might be the one that you're going to use to insure the aircraft after you finish building it mm, okay so, kind of like a trial um, run so, like if you're if you're building a house you've got um uh, builders risk insurance, and then you roll it into a full on that's exactly um, policy when you're done with that. Right. And so with, with aviation insurance and the builders insurance side, some of the companies out there like to underwrite this risk and they want to know a little bit about you. Now uh, it's not just something that you can pull up a chart and say, nah, these are the rates. It's not necessarily that simple. Hey, before we get too deep into this, let me thank our sponsors that make all this possible. Great companies like Airworks, Airtech Coatings, Clemens Insurance Agency, Acme Aero, Stoll Creek Aviation, Wheelan Aerospace Technologies. So take a moment after this video to say hello to all of them and remember to check out the affiliate links in the description below. And remember, just build it. Let's get back to it. Okay. They, they like to know who they're dealing with and they like to think about the fact that they might be insuring you in the future. And so. So, so if it's not, it's not quite that, that simple as far as just a, a check the box to dive into a little bit deeper and what, what that looks like of an insurance company getting to know you to evaluate what they're going to end up uh, writing a policy for you. Oh yeah. Well, you think about what you were just saying about hurricanes. Okay. Do you know there are absolutely no hurricanes in, in Montana? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> and there's so, a heck of a lot of tornadoes probably of, and well, ice yeah, storms. But, yeah, but there's a hail. There's, yeah, and there's there's a lot of different things in different geographical locations across the country. And so sure. every place is different. And so there's some things like that that you have to take into consideration that it's just not boilerplate. Okay. So okay. also Do you, you ask things like about, do you, do you ask things like, do you have a trampoline in your backyard? Yeah. Uh, do you have? <laughs> do you have any youthful operators? 
Got it. Oh, Got yeah. It. Yeah. Do you have All a vicious right. dog? Right, right. That likes to chew aircraft tires. Actually, somebody posted a video uh, about a bear. I think it was gnawing on some tires recently on social. I thought that was kind of funny. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be right. bad news. So, so there's builders. Let's call, let's call it builders risk insurance while you're building. Yeah, uh, you know the kit form. And you know you can buy just liability insurance on your aircraft. You know to where you know if you do damage to someone else, then it'll pay. Right. Or you can buy liability and what they call in the auto insurance world, they call it comprehensive insurance Mm -hmm. where it's like, uh, but in the aviation world, they call it not in motion coverage. Okay. So there's, there's liability, not in motion and in motion coverage that you can purchase. Which would be also a whole, you would call that whole insurance then? Yeah. Yeah. It's the whole insurance, the in motion and not in motion are the whole coverage. Okay. And so, so you, so with the not in motion, that would obviously be if the plane is sitting and not moving, hence the word Mm -hmm. and in motion would be the aircraft is moving either taxiing or in flight. And you know, you strike something, hit something. That's where that coverage would be in place. Okay. So, and is there a different policy for the, for the whole acts of nature thing of like, you know, tornado does hit the hangar and I think Alabama had that happen a couple of times recently in the last year or two. So your aircraft would not be in motion. So that would be the either, not in motion. That that's where that would come into play. Yeah. Okay. So. Now obviously I'm in the experimental end of things here. Let's talk about something that's uh, usually a hot topic on social. I see and people are, moving transitioning from the build stage and get ready to fly and that is first flight let's talk about first flight and then after that ensuring an experimental and what kind of things um, might play into that so is there in fact a first flight and does it cost as much as the airplane to get no. or how does how no. does that work so there you know there are so many variables in in the cost of the insurance and if you've never set foot in that type of an aircraft before and you're going to do a first flight in that aircraft, I can promise you that it's going to be expensive. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, but there are things that you can do to, uh, to make that a better rate. And that is get some training. So typically with every type of aircraft that you're, that there is to build, there's someone out there that's providing training in those aircraft. Okay. And you can go out and get that training and learn and more what, about it. You're a better pilot. And what do the insurance companies like to see as far as hours uh, when you're doing that type of training? Um, I guess both on, oh, let's we'll, we'll talk about the pilot first and then the aircraft being that we're talking about experiment, like the numbers of aircraft that are flying in that particular platform. Once again, there are a lot of variables there. Okay. It's, it's, you know, if the pilot has a lot of time in, let's say uh, he's insuring a tailwheel aircraft and he's already got several thousand hours of tailwheel, um, they might require a very low amount of time transition. transition. But someone with zero time, and then he's going to pick up an aircraft that's a tailwheel, a new first flight or even anything, they're going to want to see some training. Mm-hmm. And so, and if you opt not to do the training, I mean, it's not that you can't get insurance. It'd just be a lot more expensive. Got it. Got so, it. And, and about, so, so about the aircraft itself um, for a minute. I mean, there's, there's a lot of aircraft kits that have been in production for, for decades and there's thousands and thousands of them flying like, you know, Vans aircraft or aircraft or Rams, let's say, you know, just to list three. Um, and I, that would probably be easier. I would assume. But what about something that doesn't have, thousands of flying, but maybe a hundred or maybe 50. Um, how much does that play into it? Well, with aviation insurance in comparison to auto insurance, okay. you know, auto insurance, um, there's millions and millions and millions of, of Ford escorts. Let's sure. say, um, but how many Cessna 172s are there out there? Right. There's thousands of them, right? right? Right. But there's still not millions like there are in the auto insurance world. And so 
in the aviation side of things, the actuarial stuff is there, there, there seems to be a lot more variables than there would be on the auto insurance side, because there's just so much more actuarial data out there on the auto insurance side than there would ever be on aviation. You know, okay. like, like I was just saying, like the Ford Escort or a Toyota Corolla or whatever, there's, there's more Toyota Corollas out there, just that one model than there are all aircraft ever built. Yeah. So, so yeah, it, like a Vans versus uh, something else out there that doesn't have as much uh, exposure. Mm -hmm. um, the, there are some companies that if they don't have any experience, they're probably going to be more reluctant to insure it or give it probably give it a higher insurance premium so that they can protect themselves from the unknown. Sure. But, you know, that's only one of the variables. You know, there's, there's multiple variables when you're looking at the cost of insurance. Okay. Number one variable I would say is the guy holding the stick. Mm. Look at the pilot, the pilot. first. I mean, because ultimately the what you're doing with insurance is you're, insur you're insuring a dollar amount, right? You're not really insuring oh, yeah. the airplane. You're insuring a dollar amount, you know, whether it's yeah, 50000 or 75000 or $100,000, right? And then, of course, you're, you're assuming and trying to uh, figure out the risk involved to that dollar amount. Yeah. Yeah. But, there are, but there's the, the one variable is the pilot. Mm. The next variable is the aircraft. Okay. And the next variable is the location. Okay. So you think about, you know, where you're at in Florida, what's the elevation? Uh, I think we're at like 50 feet or maybe 30 feet. So you think that the elevation, the density altitude there would be any different than it would be if you were at Telluride or somewhere like that, that has, you know, it's 9,000 some odd feet. Right. Right. And yeah, you're in the mountains. At, and, Zero to 1,000 yeah. density altitude on a hot day versus nine to 11,000 density altitude on a hot day. Yeah, or on a cold day. <laughs> or a cold day. <laughs> yeah. So, so there's that variable as well. So you, you've, you've got an underwriter, insurance underwriter is going to look at, at the pilot, they're going to look at the aircraft, and they're going to look at, at where this aircraft's at. And, and what kind of runway do you have? Is it is it a 400 foot runway or is it a 4,000 foot runway? Okay. Is it, what is it? Is it grass? Is it pavement? So they, they take in account you know, for the, the whole of, entire, the entire environment that the, uh, this aircraft is, is oh, based yeah. out of essentially. Okay. Yeah. And so, you know, there are things though that, that you can do. I mean, what are you, what are you in control of when it comes to the cost of your insurance? Mm-hmm. I mean, you're in control of, of the pilot because you are the pilot. So you can choose to do things to improve your odds of getting a better deal on your insurance. Okay. One and of those I would, things that, would be, I guess, to be current and to try to get some time and type <laughs> yeah. of that aircraft, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So time and type is a big deal. Yeah. And not just time and type, but time and type. In the, within the last 12 months. Right. Yeah. So I mean, I, I, I'm in the build stage and I've been in the build stage for some time to be complete, you know, clarity here and transparency. Uh, I've been focusing more on the build. So I haven't been flying as much, but I know very well, even to, to boost some confidence, I'm going to probably go out there and throw some money down at a flight school some, somewhere and get 10 hours in just to fly a regular certified airplane again to get, you know, comfortable. Then try to find somebody that has something similar to what I'm building to get probably five to 10 of transition hours. Right. So then I'll, I'll be up in the, the 20 to 25 hour range of currency within 12 months. And hopefully well, you that just need to come to Kansas, come to Kansas and fly the cub with me. Okay. Well, so I'll take you up you on do that, that. All you want. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> so that's the, that's the pilot side of or it. You can come here and we can fly to Lakeland in December and Ooh. you can ride back with me. Ooh, nice. There you go. Nice. I love these opportunities. <laughs> so that's the pilot side of things. Then you've got, all right, so how can we control the environment on the aircraft, right, to reduce rates or whatnot? I, I would assume right away, if you're tied down versus hangered, 
that immediately changes things because then you're not in a storm, you're not in a hail, you're not in wind and or somebody drunken taxiing into your airplane on the ramp, right? So. Oh yeah. Yeah. We've seen it where, you know, your airplane weathers the storm perfectly, but the guy next to you that's tied down or maybe he doesn't tie down. Yeah. And then that aircraft runs into yours. No, I've, I've and, seen that first that hand. Little... I've worked at airports yeah. uh, in the past and like, I guess a tornado or a microburst came through and literally a plane was up on its nose and spun around on its spinner on top of another aircraft, you know, and just, it chose that one <laughs> to lift it up and spin it around. So, yeah. In that scenario, you'd obviously better be better off in a hangar. Sure. So, sure. So, so the, the rates reflect that. So we talked about the airframes and the numbers, and I assume it's kind of the same thing with engines. Cause again, I'm in the experimental world here. So we've got legacy type engines of Lycoming continental and modifications of that. Then we've got, automotive conversion engines and we've got we've got all kinds of things that you know it's probably a dozen now um how badly does that play into or how can people overcome any type of insurance company naysayer about that kind of stuff i think that the best thing to do there is before you make make a huge modification to your experimental aircraft outside of the envelope that it is normally operates in or what that manufacturer it, it, typically uses or something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Then it, it's, it's best to check it out with your broker okay. and just find out if just, just go ahead and pick up the phone is, and, is and this have a conversation. Is horsepower engine going to be okay to put on my uh, Zenith or whatever. Right. Right. So, okay. <laughs> it's probably not. Fair enough. So, fair enough. There's a question I had written down. Um, because I hear this a lot or see this a lot on social and stuff is how many hours must a pilot truly have to reach a better rate on insurance? And what is the time required in type to be insured? So two questions there, but really like. Those are insanely insane. good questions, but there's so many different. Again, the variables of that particular that. pilot. My God, you know, you have, you have some insurance companies that, that have a number of, Time and type of 25 hours is a real common number that we hear all the time that they want to see. And they'd like to see that recent hours, okay. not six years ago. Right. Right. So, but is that always the case? Absolutely not. So if, if you have very low time and you only have 25 hours in type, mm -hmm. they might ask you to do a little bit more dual and even ground instruction. Okay. But is so, there like a commonality of like, like I've got just over 200 hours. Is there yeah. a, a, a change from like somebody who has 75 hours to a 200 hour mark? Is there literally, literally a mark that things start to get a little bit better for you? You don't look quite as risky. I can tell you that the, the 200 hour mark is better than the 75. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank Definitely. you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not to say that we can't insure a 75 hour pilot because you can. Okay. But one of the things that, the, there, there are a lot of things that that 75 hour pilot as well as the 200 hour pilot can do to improve their odds on getting a better rate and going out and getting a tailwell certification it's an awesome thing mm. and you improve your, your piloting skills and it's not an expensive uh, endorsement to get yeah uh, going through uh, if you go on Aviation 101 or any of those YouTube websites like that or training, Blanco training Lirio. channels. Yeah. Uh, you, the Blanco Lirio, you, the Flywire, Aviation 101, Flight Chops, uh, Finer Points, all those guys are talking about the AQP programs and the advanced qualification is, is, it's a checklist of things that you can do to prevent accidents. Okay. And, and there's really no, uh, there's, there's really no uh, set up or, or specific thing that you can say, you can send this to an insurance underwriter and they're going to give you a better deal. But I can tell you that the more training that you can give yourself, the better odds that you are going to get a better rate. Okay. And if you go through and 
and download this PDF off of the, like the Aviation 101 website or the YouTube channel, then you can, you can go through this process with your instructor and you can submit that to your broker. And the least thing that could happen there is that you've got more experience. Mm -hmm. So it, it might save you on your insurance premium, but it also might save your life. Yeah. Yeah, you sure. Know, the experiences sure. that you receive through going through this additional training is it can't hurt you, but all it can do is help you. Yeah, so whether yeah. it's it's going to reduce your insurance premium, hopefully it will. It might just save your life, and if it does, <laughs> that's a lot better than any insurance rate. Sure, sure. So, I mean, the the best insurance is not to ever yeah. have to use the insurance, right? And oh, absolutely, especially for in motion. Uh, another oh, question yeah. I've seen out there is there an age at, at some point in time where you just can't get insurance? Is it an age thing or more of a medical thing? Well, here recently I, I've noticed that there, there is a magic number to where some insurance companies, not all, but some insurance companies are stepping away from the table of taking on new customers. Now, if, if you're, if you stay with an insurance company indefinitely and you don't have any claims, more than likely you're not going to have any problems. Okay. But that magic number from what I've seen recently is 70. Okay. And after age 70, there are some, like I said, not all insurance companies are stepping away from accepting new customers. And, you know, we insure a lot of people that come to us, over the age of 70 and we don't have any trouble doing it. It's just that we have less companies that we can select from. Sure. Sure. So, okay. And, and we're still here and this ties into like the automotive industry, of course, but is there any type of safe driver or safe flyer discount programs out there? Uh, not that I'm aware of no. Okay. So this evaluation is very, very personal. Uh, from the get go, and, and based on that, is what your rate is not necessarily longevity or proving you're already supposed to be a good pilot, you're already supposed to not yeah. complain. So, we're not gonna yeah. give you bonus points for not tearing it up. Yeah, <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. That makes sense <laughs> in reality. People, yeah. you know, drive cars texting while driving and eating and, and doing everything else, and they're they're driving six inches from other people, right? So I text with my autopilot on all the time. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> all right. Um, do you happen to have any uh, like ballpark uh, quotes on any specific aircraft that you just to give an idea of what uh, November 2nd, 2020 might look like if you were to ensure X airframe or pilot, or we can't really do that without talking to the pilot. Uh, you know, I can, I can give you some examples of myself okay, and you know, which I, I run insurance quotes on myself all the time and, and the different underwriters kind of roll their eyes because they know that I'm not going to go change my insurance from what I have now, but they do it. Okay. But uh, you know, so, so you, give me, so get, to be fair, give me your stats, yeah. give me your stats. If you're going to do an insurance quote on yourself. So we know okay. what, what you have. I have a lot of, I've got a lot of time. Okay. A lot of total time. I've got over 6,000 hours total time. Because you've been flying since you were six months old. Yeah. 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 And I, I have, I'm, I'm just a, a private pilot. I'm not a commercial pilot or anything, but I'm an instrument rated pilot. And I have a seaplane rating. So, you know, I, I did a quote on, on um, Melinda, my wife. I, I did a quote on her Cessna 182 yesterday just for fun, just to, okay. on our, we have an online uh, rater on our website where you can go on there. And if you click on the uh, aviation port part of our, of, of our website, it asks you to fill out, do a quote. And so I went on there yesterday and did a quote. Okay. So, you know, a um, hundred thousand dollars whole value on that airplane uh, with a million Liability with 200,000 um, per passenger limit on the liability. It was a thousand bucks for the year. Yeah. Okay. But you know, and this is something though, I, I, I see all the time. If you, if you're 
on any forum, everybody always talks about, you know, well, I only pay this. Well, I only pay this. Well, there's so many variables there between pilots that comparing numbers is is pointless. Yeah, because deductibles and because so you're on that on that. Your, what would be the deductible on that? It's going to be way different than the guy next to you. Yeah. What would be the deduct- deductible on that scenario? Zero. Really? We, okay. Yeah, that's a zero deductible. Some insurance companies like putting deductibles on, others don't. Mm-hmm. Others, I mean, you ask, you ask some of the insurance companies if they'll put a deductible on, they're like, no, we won't do it. Yeah. Others are very well. Bad. I mean, in, in all reality, um, you know, a hundred thousand dollar payout, and, and if you had a five hundred dollar or, or five thousand dollar deductible, it's just pittance, right? Compared to the, the yeah. five thousand dollars. So, <clears throat> but one of the biggest things, like let's let's use that Cessna one eighty two quote, okay, as an example of, of the things that you shouldn't do. So let's say that I owe the bank fifty thousand dollars on that Cessna one eighty two, okay. or or you can you can use a uh, adjust aircraft, super stole XL. Okay. You know what? So let's use that as an example. And the thing is worth a hundred thousand dollars, but I only owe 50,000. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to insure it for any more than I owe. Right. So <laughs> you can, if you want. but so let's say you put $50,000 on that thing and then you wrap it, you wrap it up around a tree. And it's totaled. Mm-hmm. So if you only have 50000 on that, the insurance company is going to total that airplane. And just like a car, when they total your car, they take your car with them. Right. And so they would do the same thing with the aircraft. And so if you only had $50,000 worth of damage on your $100,000 airplane, they're going to take your plane. Yeah. So... The best thing that you can do there is do your best, do your due diligence to know what your aircraft is worth because you don't want to overinsure your aircraft, nor do you want to underinsure your aircraft. You need to do your best to find out what that aircraft is really worth. You know, I'm one of those people that I will, I'm not bragging on myself at all. I'm kind of dumbing myself down here because it's true. Uh, like with Melinda's airplane, I loaded that thing up with avionics, put new paint, new interior, all new glass. Uh, I probably got $165,000 in that stupid airplane. Mm. What's it insured for? What it's worth. Got it. And it's not worth $165,000. Got it. And so, you, if, if something is to happen to your aircraft, you, they're typically not going to want to insure it for any more than what it's worth. So be aware of that before you go throwing tons of money into an airplane, make sure that you can actually get that much insurance on it okay. because you can buy lots of cool stuff for an airplane, but it doesn't necessarily, the amount that you spend doesn't necessarily equal the amount that it makes your airplane worth. Okay. Well, regardless so just, of worth, can, can a pilot choose? You know, let's say they drop fifty grand into an instrument panel, and it doesn't change the market value of it. Just it, it doesn't, right? Um, oh, it, it can, does. Can they insure it? I mean, I'm just let's just say maybe not for like apples to apples. Oh, Could well, they insure yeah, right it for here. a dollar amount that they want to? Because again, we're insuring a dollar amount, you know, not necessarily an airplane. If they wanted, if they want a million dollar insurance on a hundred thousand dollar airplane, could they do it? No. 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 It's going gonna, it's gonna to have to be within reason of the, the yes. value of the aircraft. Right. Okay. Well, I guess that yeah. keeps people from doing other things with their airplanes then by putting yeah. too much money up there. Okay. But it's, and it's, it, it goes both <laughs> ways. The insurance company doesn't want to assume the risk on, on something that's not worth what, it's, what they're insuring it for. Fair enough. So, you know, we insure everything from, from uh, home builds to jets and, you know, a, a lot of times in an aircraft on a, on a larger aircraft, like Phenom 300, for example, it's a okay. nice, just a, it's a really nice corporate jet. I mean, if, if the value drops a, a little bit, it could 
drop outside of the limit that the person owes on it. Mm. And so you really have to work hard to get that back up to where what, at least to a value that what they would want it want to insure for. Got it. Got it. So, well, we're, uh, we're coming up on, I think we've been about 30 minutes here. Let me uh, wrap it up here a little bit, but talk to me briefly about this new website. Tell me briefly about this, uh, this new website, or at least the changes to your website that you can go on and get a quote. So what we've done just recently is we've added a rater to our website for aviation insurance. Okay. So if you as, if you as a consumer want to go on and get your own quote yourself, you can. Okay. Whether it's renter's insurance, CFI insurance. So if you're a CFI and you want to go out and get liability insurance, you can do that right there online. Uh, if you want to get a rate on your experimental aircraft or on your certified aircraft, you can go online and do that. Okay. Uh, Excellent. Also, you can if you have a drone, you can get insurance for your drone right there. So excellent, excellent. Well, I'll put a link in the description whatever. below, which you, you have, I have a link, a description below to your, uh, your website as it is right now. Yeah. We're like, there. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty poor, isn't it? Nice. That's some great marketing right there, Jerry. And if, if you don't like to go to the website, you can just call Jerry's cell. I love it. I love it. <laughs> You tow a banner behind your airplane. Yeah. So full disclosure, everybody, I'll just go ahead and, and just full clarity here. Um, Jerry is a sponsor of the channel and, and the reason uh, that he's a sponsor and the reason why we we're working together is I went out to the, uh, the Benson airfield ACCA awards this past year. And, and I don't know, we had a conversation probably an hour out there and just, I was really impressed with the, everything going on out there. And then Jerry is just a very down to earth, easy to talk to person. And then we met up again at Arkansas. And again, we had another probably hour long conversation. So when oh, yeah. we got together and started talking about doing this is like, it's a no brainer. It's like, he's, he's easy to talk to. Uh, he's a professional. He knows what he's doing in business. So it just is like, yeah, this is a no brainer. So I just want to share that for a minute. If, if you call him, be prepared to talk aviation because he enjoys the conversation just like I do. So a lot anyway. of fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up here. We've been on for about a half hour or so. Again, the link in the description below to the website, you've got those shameless plugs there with phone numbers on a piece of paper. You can give Jerry a call. Uh, if you have a, if you have a hard time getting a hold of him. If he's out flying, call me and I'll start the conversation with you. I don't care. But or you can call June. Every call June. But thanks for joining us today. And uh, if you haven't already, I invite you to, to like this video, subscribe to the channel, tell everybody in your family and your friends about this. Help me grow uh, experimental light sport and ultralight aviation together. I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks a bunch.